Go, go, go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Practical GCP. So today I would like to showcase some experiments I've done on uh, deploying a PubSub message consumer on a GKE autopilot cluster. So, so first of all, I'll talk about just a brief introduction on the difference between the normal GKE, which stands for Google Kubernetes Engine, versus the autopilot version of it. Uh, and then I'll run through a scenario of a specific use case with two different designs of message consumers. So basically to compare the pros and cons and why actually I want to describe these two things and what's the difference and what you get by using one or the other. Uh, and because uh, as usual, this stuff is quite complex. So I've actually prepared some code example on the GitHub, uh, on a GitHub repository where you can look at uh, and I'll go through the details of how this works, uh, how to configure it, uh, how to deploy it. And finally, uh, I'll do a demo to showcase the uh, auto scaling capabilities uh, using the autopilot uh, cluster for the uh, message, message consumer. So, okay, let's crack on. So this is the page that Google has given to show the uh, difference between the autopilot mode and the standard mode for the GKE cluster. So I think uh, it is probably good to look at in a way that uh, basically in the autopilot cluster, the biggest difference is you don't actually get to manage any of the nodes, right? You don't actually manage virtual machines at all, or you don't manage notebooks either. So these are created for you by, uh, by Google. So you just use it basically. Um, and all of the scaling is done dynamically by the, uh, the, the service. You don't actually get to configure uh, you know, the, the details of, uh, of creating a node pool with minimum next nodes. You actually deal with at port level. So, the, um, so that's the biggest difference. There are a number of other things uh, still in beta. So if you're actually looking for the managed Anthos service mesh, uh, there's still some of these things are in currently in preview. Uh, so if that is a requirement, uh, it's probably not the best time to use autopilot cluster. So now, now let's talk about a scenario and the two type of message uh, consumer designs. So these two are the push based uh, message consumer versus the pool based message consumer. So let's look at the first one. The first one is based on using, utilizing the cloud run service. What you do is you deploy a subscriber and then you can configure an endpoint that on cloud run where you can push those messages via HTTPS. So that's uh, in a nutshell how it works. The, the way it works is then you, because you push the message via HTTPS and all of these messages will be independent uh, on the cloud run service, unless you do some really complex uh, thread pool management, but by default, uh, keep it simple then you get a single message request coming through uh, to the CloudNet service. So keep in mind, this scenario is based on, uh, you actually have in both cases, you have a third party system that you have to send a uh, request to. So in the first use case, all of these messages are independent and then you would push your messages to your third party. Uh, in the second use case, Instead of uh, using the Cloud Run service, this is what we'll be focusing on today to use the Kubernetes autopilot engine to consume the message by pulling them. So the big difference is here is when you deploy those uh, message consumer services on the Kubernetes cluster, you typically pull messages in a stream of them. You, you typically don't pull it just like one independently like this one. You pull one after another without stopping, right? Uh, and you can batch them if you choose to, to increase the throughput, because some of these third-party services, they do support batching. Um, and then you can, let's say, if your latency is not exactly the requirement uh, for your use case, that you can increase the latency a little bit, but increase your throughput. So in this particular case, you can get a lot of these messages uh, or in a message stream. And then again, you use CloudNet to push those messages into third-party systems, right? So now let's talk about the difference uh, in terms of pros and cons. In the first use case, it is much easier to deploy and run the service. You just deploy the cloud run service uh, as an API, 
then you create a subscriber, then push to the API. That's it. There's no infrastructure to manage. It's completely serverless. And also it scales up very fast. And when you have a spike of messages, Cloud Run actually scales really fast within, you know, like a five to 10 seconds or even faster than that, depends on how you configure it. So the scaling uh, up is very fast. There is also a problem with this approach. Um, because now you have a third party system that you need to send those requests to, right? Because these are all single independent messages. And then this is a push notification to your Cloud Run service. There isn't actually easy, an easy way to rate limit your rate, right? So if you suddenly get a huge amount of messages here, and one of the issues I've encountered in the past was it all the way goes through to your third party systems. So if this third party system is not designed very well to be you know, very scalable, then you can absolutely crash it, right? That's one of these issues you can run into with this kind of scenario. Um, and there is one thing that is quite interesting. I don't know if, how many of you actually know this. So basically in a nutshell, there is a, a limit on how many concurrent requests you can make when using the cloud net service going outbound. And then if you actually hit the limit, means your service could be down and then you cannot make any more requests when it actually hits the, hits the limit. So this is actually a very serious issue when you have uh, your solution using the cloud run service and then your downstream is the, uh, the cloud net gateway directly uh, piped into the third party system. So this is something uh, I really recommend you uh, have a read about that article here um, and I fully understand the you know, your, the amount of traffic you get and then the uh, issues you might hit in the cloud net service. So that's the pros and cons of the cloud run based system. With the message consumer that we deploy as a way to pull the messages. Um, so the, the, the good side of this is uh, you can actually support batching as I mentioned earlier. So if you get some of these messages, batch them together, send it to a downstream system, uh, you're likely able to get much, much bigger throughput in a short period of time. Um, the other perk in here is you, you can actually reuse the HTTP connection. So when you get, uh, let's say, uh, the messages, because you're getting in an event stream, right? Even you're not batching. When you create the session, so this is on your worker, right? Where you deploy your service. You can create a uh, HTTPS connection and then reuse that connection in the same session, then use that same connection to send uh, the messages to the third-party systems. This is extremely efficient. Uh, and also uh, it will only open one connection uh, in the, this would only be one concurrent connection in there. Uh, so it would never hit the cloud that issue in this particular case, even you have 10, 20 workers, it will be, you know, nothing compares to the, this one, which is on the individual or single message request level. I guess it may be a little bit more difficult to deploy and run because this is not, although uh, autopilot gives you a lot more like the areas that you don't have to manage, but it's still not serverless, right? It's not, it's not something you can just like cloud run and then deploy and runs. There's still a bunch of things you need to do before you can even deploy a service. Um, and so it's a little bit more difficult than cloud run in order to run this. And then you need to kind of maintain the autopilot cluster to a degree yourself. Uh, and also is the scaling is not instant. And uh, when you kind of scale up, it takes a bit of time behind the scenes to create the nodes and then to scale up the traffic. Uh, so it's not as instant as the cloud run service. So if you actually hit, get hit by a very high throughput of traffic in the cloud run side, uh, it may not be able to catch up immediately depending on how you, you know, set things up. So that's the, you know, the difference between the two designs. So now I think it would be good to show you a, a code example on how, you know, how you can actually deploy the service. I've prepared a repository on GitHub. Uh, I'll make this public uh, at the end of this video. So this is a pool-based consumer that de deployed to the um, GK autopilot cluster. So let me just quickly go through this. The Docker file here is basically some basic instructions and pulling the 
the file which has the main and the requirements.txt. But obviously this is just for a demo purpose, right? If you use it for production ready, use something that you can control the versions uh, of the exact uh, Python packages in here. Uh, but this is basically just a way you can deploy the consumer and uh, run it, right, with the entry point. And the actual message consumer is here. I mentioned about rate limiting earlier. So this is one of the interesting things you can use flow control. So you can actually control the uh, message flow. Uh, it doesn't matter how much messages you get from the PubSub uh, topic. And then you would always restrict how much messages you can consume in this particular case. Okay. There is another thing which is useful. Uh, that is the demo producer uh, thing I've created. You can uh, send a large amount of messages to the uh, PubSub topic. So which I would need to use in this uh, demo later on to show you how the auto scaling works. And finally, uh, under the deployment, uh, you've got two files. Uh, let's look at this one first. So this is the some simple instructions to basically deploy your uh, autopilot pops up consumer service into the autopilot cluster uh, with uh, which you specify the service count on the kubernetes cluster you want to use uh, and also the uh, image you want to use with two environment variables right so and the hpa setup right it stands for horizontal pod autoscaler and it will basically respond based on the undelivered messages in the pop sub uh, based on the average value that I've set in here uh, to scale the number of pods up or down. In order to make this work, there's actually a bit of complexity going on in here. Uh, if you've watched one of my previous videos, I've talked about the GKE uh, cluster workload identity management. So if you want to understand a little bit more about how the workload identity works on a GKE cluster, uh, check out the Composer uh, 2 video I posted a few weeks ago. Okay, so these are the two sections uh, that specifies the, the details on how to set up the workload identity in oral scenario. And the first one is for the consumer. And then the second one where it gets interesting is we actually need a metric adapter service. Um, so the reason we need the metric, the metric adapter service is that when, in order for the auto scaler to work, uh, we need to deploy this service itself into the autopilot cluster. So then when the uh, auto scaler in the definition here that is looking for the number of undelivered messages from PubSub and it will be able to find out for this particular PubSub subscription, how many messages has not been acknowledged. So this is very important because if you do not deploy the service, uh, the metric adapter service, then you would not be able to and make the autoscaler work. It's actually quite straightforward for the autoscaler to work. You just need to look at this page. I'll again include this link. Um, there's a section called the custom metric adapter. So you just need to follow instructions on how to deploy this thing. And then your autoscaler for PubSub is going to work. Right. In order to make this a little bit easier to understand uh, on the workload identity management, uh, this is what I've actually set up on the cluster. So you've got the uh, Kubernetes cluster with the autopilot uh, enabled. And then there are two namespaces. One is for our PubSub consumer demo. So this is where I've deployed the um, KSA, which stands for Kubernetes service count. And this is linked to the GSA, which is the GCP service count. So this one is the one for our consumer and it will need to have the role of the PubSub subscriber. Otherwise, it won't be able to consume the messages from the message queue. The other one is the for the custom metrics. And as we mentioned, we need to deploy the metrics adapter. Um, and then in order to do that, you need to uh, get the uh, KSA of the custom metrics uh, to link to your uh, GSA for the custom metrics. And then this one, we we'll need to have, have access to the monitoring viewer. If it doesn't have the monitoring viewer, it won't be able to pull the pops up and deliver the messages metric from the uh, stack driver monitoring, right? That's how this thing got set up. Finally, I would like to do a demo to show you how this actually works. Um, I've got a topic created, which is the autopilot test, right? 
and I've got a subscription created in here. And as you can see now, there's no messages I've got in here. Um, on the workload, currently I have the autopilot pops up consumer deployed. So this is the one that's going to consume messages. You can see this only has one pod. Um, it doesn't actually have any traffic to consume at the moment. On the other hand, I've got the custom metric stack driver adapter deployed. This is the one, again, is required in order for the, the auto scaler for the pops up consumer service to pick up the metric and decide when to scale up or down. Uh, this one is in the pops up consumer demo namespace, as we talked about earlier. And then the metric adapter is in the custom metrics namespace in the cluster. So what I'm going to do now is I will send 100,000 messages to the pops up topic. Uh, and I will show you the actions on how the autoscaler kicks in by looking at the metrics. Uh, and then it will scale up the messages and it will st start consuming the message a lot faster. Right. Let me just start with that. Right. Now you can see the unacknowledged messages ramping up. And then the oldest unacknowledged messages age is jumping up into seven seconds. So this as this updates, because I've just sent 100,000 messages to the message queue. So now the, the, what I'm hoping to see is very quickly in here, this is the, this is the consumer service. So look, you can see the autoscaler is now responding to the, to the, to the message that has been, uh, have not been acknowledged. Here we can see now it's got a hundred thousand in there. It's got two minutes backlog. So this is still taking its time to scale up. And in the meantime, if I show you the the Kubernetes uh, console that you can see is actually scaling up, right? So initially it's got one, and then everything is pending, including the original one. It's got five in there. So because I've set it to the maximum, we can have is five at the moment. And now you can see this is this is going up, right? So everything's running. And now there's five pods running instead of one. So the UI is a bit of out of date, out of date. And then, but here I'm showing you the uh, the command line interface that directly uh, tapped into the cluster, so you can see the most up to date information. So let's have a look at this again. Right now, the user interface is also updated, so you can see the uh, now we have five pods that consume the message. If I have a look at the number of, uh, of unacknowledged messages here, so you can see it starts going down, right? I think that it, it took a couple of minutes for this to scale up. Um, and obviously once this traffic goes down to zero, uh, it will automatically scale back to one pod. Yeah, now you can see it's dropped down to about 80,000. Yeah, requested quite a lot, still doing, not doing much at all because the control flow workflow was uh, set to quite low. But you get the idea. Yeah. So this is how you can deploy the uh, pool-based consumers uh, for pups up into the GKE autopilot cluster. Um, I've not obviously tried this on the production environment yet, but uh, I don't see why not, right? This is something that you probably want to leave this running for a while in the UAT environment to see how well it behaves for the different kind of traffic patterns. In my opinion, this is actually a very good design uh, for this kind of use case, because if you have a third-party system, uh, it's almost always better to have um, the ability to support batching and also able to reuse the same HTTPS connection uh, is really, really powerful in this particular case. That's the end of the session. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. See you next time. Go, go, go out.